Pennsylvania. The Keystone State has become a leader in energy production and is well known for the extensive use of hydraulic fracturing, aka fracking, for oil and natural gas. But how does the process really work? What happens behind the scenes? In this episode of Conservation Nation, I'll drill into what's really going on with fracking. We find ourselves at Cameron Energy in Clarendon, Pennsylvania. The company specializes in pumping existing, servicing broken, and plugging old wells respectively, but specializes in fracking. I'm Arthur Stewart, I'm president of Cameron Energy. We formed 33 years ago, hard to believe. Before hydrofracturing, we shot wells with nitroglycerin, so we've been cracking the formations either with water through hydrofracturing or nitroglycerin for 150 years. So this device is a pump jack and it's pumping the oil that migrated to the well bore, but that oil wouldn't move to the well bore if we weren't able to hydrofracture. But how does hydrofracturing actually work? This video from Noble Energy explains the process. The next step is to hydraulically fracture or frack the zone. Here, sand or other propants are pumped into the well bore under extremely high pressure. When the mixture reaches the target zone, the pressure forces it out through the perf holes and out into the sandstone formation, causing it to fracture. This creates a fairway connecting the reservoir to the well and allows the released oil to flow to the well bore. While the engineering involved in fracking is impressive, fracking is under attack from environmentalists and many media outlets that say the process is unsafe. In our area, fracking has never been a scary term. But when the deeper, unconventional wells came, the enviros hijacked the word because it, oh, well, that sounds kind of scary, so let's make it scary. But fracking really, all it means is, you know, well completion, and all you're doing is hydrofracturing, and fracking for short, by breaking rock so that oil and gas can get to the well bore so you can produce homegrown energy here in Pennsylvania. Let's return to the video from Noble Energy which explains the safeguards involved in fracking. The casing is then secured into place by pumping cement through the casing and through the shoe at the bottom of the hole. The cement barrier and steel casing prevent any contamination of freshwater aquifers. I've heard a lot about fracking today. Now it's time to see it up close and personal for myself. One thing's for sure, the people here love what they do and are passionate about providing energy through fracking in northwestern Pennsylvania. I was fracking since I was 16 years old, 20 years now. I think the hardest thing about fracking for myself is getting up early. Uh, like this morning I had to get up at like 2 o'clock to get out here. Yeah, but I mean, it's worth it once you get out here because you try to beat the sun because once it gets hot, it's awful. It's taxing a lot on your mind, too. You have to pay close attention to what you're doing so you don't uh, mess up. On location, 4.30 in the morning before the sun comes up. Work all day, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. Watch the sun go down. Get back to the shop. Be back up in the morning. Fracking plays an integral role in Pennsylvania and companies like Cameron Energy desire to keep it alive for generations to come. In the next installment of Conservation Nation, I'll present part two of my visit to Northwestern Pennsylvania, where I'll provide a in-depth and behind the scenes look into the issues surrounding fracking. Thanks so much for watching this installment. Stay tuned for part two.